Very cool. All right, awesome, guys. We're just going to be talking about some landing stuff today. No picture in picture with me. I'm just going to be flying, showing you kind of, kind of what's going on. Feel free to ask any questions as we're going along. I'm in the P-51 Mustang right now. Really, really fun plane to fly. Here we are. Holding short of the runway. We're going to take off. I'm going to talk a little bit about something that I think that some people have a little bit of trouble with, and that is uh, coming in for landings with planes. And uh, I've been meaning to put together a like official tutorial series on this. It's just so difficult to talk about without talk talking about a couple of other things first. Um, so I figured I would do it live stream first and see how this works. And based on the questions I get, I'll put together something a little bit more you know professional and and YouTube, uh, YouTube video worthy, but, uh, we'll go ahead and get us, get ourselves in the air, assuming I can actually still take off in the P-51. It's been a while. Let me know if the volume is too loud or anything like that, um, for the plane, if you can't hear me over the, over the, uh, sound effects of the game, uh, let me know. We're gonna go ahead and get lined up here on runway 8. So one of the cool things about runways in general uh, DCS, X-Plane, whatever sim, or even in real life, and, um, let me preface this all by saying that I'm not a certified flight instructor, so, uh, this is purely hypothetical, even though it is applicable. Um, the runways always line up with a heading, so if we're on runway 8, you can actually look at our heading indicator, which is not working at the moment, oh yeah it is, and we're, we're basically heading 080. So if we go to, like, our map here, we're over here at this end of the runway, and we're pointing on runway 8, 080 is the direction. If we go to the other end, the runway is, is the reciprocal. It's always that way. So if you're landing on, like, runway 26, for example, what we see over here, you're going to be coming in on about a 260 heading to land on the runway. If you have the airport diagram, it'll actually tell you what the uh, correct heading to be on for a runway is. It's always going to be around the heading that it's, you know, pointed at. Let's go ahead and get in the air, and then we'll talk about some of the other cool things about landing. Again, if the game volume is too loud, let me know. I'll adjust all of that as we go. One fifty. We'll see if we can pull up. Looks like we're good. Raise our landing gear. Lights on. And gear should be up. Pull down on the manifold. Pressure 45 inches. We're good. Alright, cool. So, welcome to the skies. Again, let me know if this is too loud or if uh, you can't hear me over the sound of the engine in the game. Um, I can adjust all of that. As far as landings go, and as far as just like general aviation goes, for the most part you kind of want to trim your aircraft out. And a lot of people have a bit of confusion when it comes to trim. So trim is essentially just setting up the controls so that you don't have to put any input. You can literally let go of the controls and the plane will fly level because all of the forces on it are balanced. We're gonna get a little nerdy here, so please bear with me when we when we start talking about some of this stuff. So right now, if I let go of my control stick, you're gonna notice that it's gonna go forward and the plane's gonna start nosing down pretty severely because um, that's just how the plane is set up right now. It wants to kind of dive. But what I can do is actually put in back trim, nose up trim, and as I introduce trim, you'll notice that I can actually start releasing the back pressure on my control stick here. 
and at a certain point, I'm not introducing any pressure on the control stick. I actually have my hands off of the controller right now, and the plane is flying more or less level. We can look at our vertical speed indicator, which is right here. I'm climbing slightly, so I might actually want to reduce the amount of trim that I have and get that closer to just kind of level flight, which will be when it's indicating it's zero. That's neither a climb nor a descent. And it takes a little bit of balancing because as you trim the aircraft level, the plane's gonna speed up slightly and then it's gonna wanna climb. And then as you um, trim it down slightly, it's gonna wanna speed up and again, it's gonna wanna climb. So you're constantly fiddling with the trim. We'll also notice that our slip indicator here is a little bit too far to the left, so we're actually going to trim out some of that so that it is balanced. And we're entering a bank when we're doing that. Because to counteract that, I introduced a little bit of left trim on takeoff for the aileron trim. But here we go, like I don't really have to put in very much control to keep the plane going straight and level. That slip indicator is still a little bit to the left. Let's do that. So some of the first things that we need to talk about when we start discussing landings or planning on coming in for a landing is what airspeed should we be going at? Right now cruising at eh, more or less a slight climb but but level flight. We're cruising over here at 275, 280 miles an hour. So we're going pretty fast. That's a little bit too fast to come in for a landing. You're going to want to be going closer to like 190 uh, on approach. So how do you slow down the plane and also re uh, reduce your altitude at the same time? So we've got our airspeed over here. We're going about 380, 385. We've got our altitude over here. We're at 3,400 feet. You can see the small hand is at the 3, and the big hand is now at the 5. So 3,500 feet. If we just point the nose down because we want to descend, watch our airspeed. It's going to start increasing. Our altitude is also decreasing, but the airspeed is going up quite a bit. That's not necessarily what we want to do. We're trying to slow down. So let's climb back up to 3,500 feet. We could just reduce the throttle, and that's kind of like the instinct, right? If you want to slow down, you're just going to reduce the amount of power that you're putting into the plane. The problem with that, and part of the reason that we started talking about trim straight off is if I'm here and I'm more or less trimmed, I'm not touching the controls right now, and the plane is flying level, it's flying balanced. It's climbing slightly, but that's it's good enough for our purposes here. If I just reduce the throttle, I want you to keep an eye on that vertical speed indicator right there. Right now it's indicating about 1,000 feet per minute climb. As soon as I reduce the throttle, Notice we're not climbing anymore. The plane is starting to descend. Now we're at level flight. All I've done is reduce the throttle. I have not introduced any forward stick or anything. The plane is essentially trying to keep the airspeed the same. The plane wants to fly at 280 or whatever we were trimmed at before we started reducing our, our throttle. So it's going to dive so that it can try and maintain that airspeed. Once it gets to that airspeed, now that we're in a pretty steep dive, it's actually going to start climbing again. It's going to level out, and eventually it'll balance out in a descent at 280 miles per hour. That's not at all what we want. So let me go back to 45 inches of manifold pressure, which is where we were. And if I get us back to 280 miles per hour, what's going to happen is the plane is going to essentially be flying in the exact same configuration it was before, before we reduce the throttle. So 
So there we are, about 280. We're climbing at about 1,000 feet per minute. It's going to start kind of oscillating a little bit. It might go down to like 800 and then up to 1,100, and then eventually we'll be climbing at the exact same rate that we stopped when we reduced the throttle. So if we reduce the throttle and we start descending so that the airplane can keep its airspeed up, how do we slow down? Um, it's actually pretty simple. You have to do two things at once. You have to both pull back the manifold pressure or the throttle, and you have to hold the plane level, as level as you can. There are a lot of forces that are acting on the plane. Uh, there's actually four of them that I can think of off the top of my head. One is the thrust of the engine. The second one, the opposite, would be drag, based on uh, just how much, you know, the wind, uh, the wings are pushing against the air, the tail, all of that stuff. The drag that the plane is creating is the opposite uh, force to the thrust that we're producing. We also have, because of the thrust, we have lift, which is a vertical force, which is keeping us in the air, and we also have gravity, which is pulling us towards the ground. Now in level flight, when you're not climbing or descending, all of these forces are more or less balanced. We're flying at about 290 miles an hour, 285, 200, whatever it ends up being, um, and that's all of our forces are balanced. We're not climbing, we're not descending, we're climbing slightly, but just go with it here. Um, if we were able to trim the plane completely balanced, that's exactly what it would be. We'd be able to hold level flight like that at a constant speed, nothing would change with the airplane. As soon as we change anything, any of the variables, if I put in a bank, for example, part of my lift uh, force is actually going sideways now. So you'll notice the plane is going to start wanting to descend. Because now not only is it holding itself up, but it's also banking and turning itself around to the left here. The same thing holds true for when you reduce throttle. When you start reducing your throttle, it's going to reduce the amount of lift that the plane is producing, because you're not going to have as much thrust pulling you forward through the air. The plane is going to naturally want to descend, and so what you're going to have to do is introduce back pressure on your stick to keep the plane level. When you do that, the plane is going, the drag is going to start overpowering the thrust that you're producing, and the plane is going to start slowing down. You'll also start holding, I mean, you'll be holding your altitude, which is what you want when you're coming in for a landing anyway. But let me go ahead and demonstrate this. Hey Detroit, how's it going man? We're talking about landings. If you have any questions as I'm going along, um, please let me know. I'm just, I am going to be a little bit nerdy about this, so uh, let me know if it comes across as clear. Right now we're more or less heading back towards the airport that we departed from, and we're at about 3,300 feet. I'm actually going to climb slightly, and to climb I'm just going to introduce a little bit more power. The plane is going to naturally want to... Uh, go up. You're incre increasing the thrust, which is going to also increase the lift, and the plane will start climbing on its own. Takes it a second to respond. We'll get up to like 3,500 feet. Here we'll level off. I'm just going to push down and pull back my throttle. Back to 45 inches of manifold pressure, and what that should do is, essentially, I should be flying straight and level at about 280 uh, miles per hour without a climb or a descent. Now, as we head back towards the airfield that we departed from, I know that I'm coming in for a landing. So what I'm going to want to do is start slowing myself down. We're going about 300 miles an hour right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back on my throttle. I'm going to pull it down to the bottom of the green arc there. That's kind of like a optimal operating uh, range. And we're just going to trim everything out and make sure that we're not going too far to one direction or the other. Hey, Logan, I'm using the uh, Thrustmaster uh, Warthog. Had it for quite a while, highly recommend it. Uh, I'm in VR right now using a Valve Index. And I've got the Thrustmaster TPR rudder pedals, which are amazing. 
So you'll notice that I've pulled my throttle back quite a bit. We're maintaining level flight as best we can, and our airspeed is coming down. We're down to 200 miles per hour. Or, I'm sorry, 250 miles per hour, but the airspeed is continuing to come down. As the airspeed is coming down, my vertical speed is also wanting to go down, so I'm constantly back trimming and pulling back on the stick to try and keep that about as level as I can. I want my altitude to stay about 3,500 as I'm approaching my airfield. And as I do that, the airspeed is going to keep creeping down. Now considering I'm coming down, coming in for a landing, I can actually pull my manifold pressure back even further. And that's just going to cause me to slow down even more. So now we're getting closer to 200 miles per hour. And again, I'm trimming constantly, just pulling back slightly on the stick, trimming the stick back. Now I'm at 200 miles per hour, which is exactly where I want to be for an approach to an airfield. At this point, if the airspeed keeps creeping down, I'm actually going to increase my manifold pressure, increase the throttle a little bit, and just try and maintain that airspeed and the altitude. Altitude's getting a little low here. So lots of little trim inputs, lots of little throttle inputs. Just trying to maintain 200 miles per hour. Now let's keep an eye out for our airfield. I'm not familiar with this area, so I might have to jump into the map and take a quick look and see exactly where it is in relation to where I am. Oh yeah, Detroit, thank you, man. The uh, SU-25 T tutorials that I put together were put together way before I had a pilot certificate, so I was just kind of talking about what I thought I knew. <laughs> and a lot of it was actually pretty accurate, but uh, there were quite a few things that I got wrong, so I'm going through. That's why I have, the, uh, I have a uh, series with the TF-51 kind of like aviation basics and stuff like that. And I'm trying to kind of correct some of the incorrect things that I said back then. So we're more or less keeping our airspeed constant, which is good. We're at 190 right now. Gonna actually introduce a little bit more throttle because I want that closer to 200. And I think that's the airfield right in front of us. It does look like an airfield. So 200 miles per hour, we're not descending or climbing. Here's our vertical speed indicator. We are coordinated with our flight. Our slip indicator is into the left or the right. We've descended a little bit, but that's not a huge deal because we're coming in for landing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the airfield just off of the right of my nose. Now in VR it's super easy because I can actually move my head to the to the right and and kind of you know peek out this corner window. If you're looking out of a, a, a straight monitor it's a little bit more difficult to uh, to manage that. But uh, you can use the camera controls to shift your head around. I think it's right control, right shift, and the arrow keys. Um, or it's the numeric, the, the number pad on the side of your keyboard uh, can shift your head around. So what I want to do is I actually want to start descending now because I'm getting closer to the airport. And I want to descend to about a thousand feet over the airport's elevation. I don't know what the airport elevation is here, so we're just going to kind of be playing it by ear. But what I want to do is I don't want to point my nose down. All I want to do right now is reduce my, air, my, my uh, throttle and the plane will naturally start descending and it will try and stay at 200 knots or 200 miles per hour in the, in the P-51. And what I can do, the plane is trimmed for 200 miles per hour. If, you, if you're able to fly level at 200 without, you know, with very minimal input, that's what the, tra the plane is trimmed for. So as you reduce throttle, the plane is going to want to more or less stay at that speed or near that speed. It looks like it wants to go back up to 250, which I'm not quite sure why in this plane, but it uh, works a lot better in some of the other ones. P-51 is kind of a fun one because the engine produces so much damn torque that the, uh, 
Every time you adjust the throttle, the plane wants to do something different. It's a lot of fun. So I'm going to do the same thing that I was doing out there. I'm just going to reduce throttle, try and maintain level flight. We're at about 2,800 feet. I think we're still a little bit high, but it's fine because we're going to give ourselves a long final. And I've got the plane off of my right wing. So there we go, about 200 miles per hour. At this point, I'm actually going to re uh, lower my lower my gear. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to also increase the amount of drag that the plane is producing. So at this point, the plane is going to want to slow down. It's going to want to start descending a little bit faster. So all I'm going to do is try and maintain level flight. Pull back on the stick and then trim nose up until I no longer have to put in any uh, control input on the joystick. And I want to start descending very slowly, so if I'm right at about two to three hundred feet per minute down, that's perfect. You'll notice my airspeed has dropped to about 180, which is also good. I might give myself a little bit more power here, just to make sure that it doesn't drop any more. But we're all good. So now we're at gear down configuration. We don't have any flaps in yet. All we're doing is managing our speed, our airspeed, and our descent rate. So I want my descent to be about 500 feet to 700 feet per minute, and I want to be about 180 miles per hour. So if we really quickly go to an exterior view, here we are. Airport's back there. We're flying parallel to the runway, and we're going to start our turn into final. Now, as I start turning, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, I'm actually trading some of my vertical uh, lift for horizontal lift so that the plane turns. So what I've got to do is actually keep an eye on my vertical speed indicator, or just if you're doing VFR and you want to look outside, check and make sure that you're not descending. Try and keep your plane as level as you can. Your airspeed will start slowing down slightly as you pull back on the stick to maintain your altitude. So just keep an eye on that as well. This is where people get in trouble and stall. They're turning, they're pulling back, they're not keeping in mind that their airspeed is also going to be uh, slowly going down as they are maintaining altitude in a turn. Because they're not thinking about the, the thrust, uh, I'm sorry, the lift force and the horizontal component of lift as well. So here we've turned, we're on final for the runway, runway eight. And we're going about 180, which is great. I'm going to reduce my throttle so that the plane starts descending, and I'm going to start trimming back. Because as I reduce my throttle, the plane's going to want to maintain 180 as it descends. By reducing the throttle, I can pitch my nose down and not gain any airspeed. Now I'm going to keep the runway right on the top of my nose, right on the top of the cowl there. 170, I'm going to start reducing, or I'm going to start lowering my flaps. And I'm just going to put them all the way down. That's going to increase drag, but also increase lift. So what's going to happen is the plane is going to start slowing down. But at the same time, it's also going to be kind of... You'll notice that the nose is pointing down a little bit further, and we're still descending at about the same rate, 500 feet per minute. Now I want to keep my airspeed above 120 on final approach here. And you'll notice that the plane is also kind of shifted to coming in a little bit sideways, and that's just because of the power of the engine. The rotational force is pushing the plane to the left, so I'm going to use a little bit of right rudder to kind of straighten it out. And at this point, everything that I do is more or less throttle to control my descent. If I pull throttle out, the plane will descend faster. If I increase the throttle, the plane will level off. I'm not pulling back on the stick or anything, and my airspeed is staying constant, right at about 120. Now, as I get closer to the runway, I can start lifting my nose, and what's going to happen is my airspeed is going to start um, bleeding off as I lift my nose, and now I can pull my throttle all the way back. I'm a little bit too far down the runway, but it's hard to talk and uh, fly at the same time. Right at about 100 miles per hour. 
And I'm going to run off the end of the runway if I actually touch down. So what I'm going to do is gently reintroduce my throttle and climb back away. I'm not going to pull back on the stick. By introducing more throttle, the plane is going to naturally just start climbing. If this was a Cessna or something, I would pretty much be introducing 100% throttle. But since it's a P-51 and it's got a 1,400 horsepower engine, uh, if I do that, the plane is going to want to roll and flip. So that's not what I'm going to do. I'm just going to very gently increase the throttle, aim, uh, which is going to have the side effect of causing the plane to want to fly. You'll notice my airspeed is going up because I'm holding it more or less level. Just a very gentle climb here. 130 no uh, miles an hour, which is awesome. And we're going to go around for another one. So at this point, you can clean the airplane up if you want. You can raise the gear. You can pull up the flaps. I actually might pull up the flaps. You want to make sure that you're well above your uh, touchdown speed when you pull up the flaps because it's going to reduce all that lift that you just added, and the plane's going to want to nose down a little bit. And we'll start our gentle turn over here. Airspeed's climbing close to 200. I don't want it to go above 200, so I'm going to pull back my throttle. And we're just going to start a gentle turn. This is the other free plane, yes. This is the TF-51. A uh, fantastic plane. Everything in the cockpit is clickable. Uh, I highly recommend it. It definitely takes a little bit of getting used to because it's a propeller plane, whereas the Su-25T is a jet plane. Propeller planes have a bunch of other forces that come from having a giant propeller on the front of the plane. And uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to. So you will want to probably go and watch my other tutorial series on the TF-51 and uh, the flight basics. But here we are, we're just kind of turning, we're paralleling the runway again. 170 miles per hour, which is perfect. And we'll just get set up for another, another landing attempt. There's an old aviation adage for kind of controlling the airplane, and it goes uh, pitch for airspeed and power for altitude. And if you go and just play around with flying straight and level and reducing your power and watching how the plane kind of starts nosing down, but it'll keep the same airspeed, more or less. It might drop a little bit before it starts descending, but once it starts descending, it'll come back up to the same airspeed. And then if you increase your throttle, like let's say you're flying at 80%, you drop it to 60, the plane will start descending. And then you're like, all right, cool. So you go up back to 80, it'll level back out at the same airspeed. Right now, I'm not touching the controls. I'm, I'm gesturing with my hands. So right here, like the plane is trimmed out pretty well for where we are. Um, and then you go up to 100% from 80%. The plane will start climbing. So your, your power is actually what's controlling your ascent and descent rate. And then if you start pitching without touching your power, like right now, if I nose down, my airspeed will start climbing. But the... Um, Obviously, my, my altitude is going to be going down because I'm pointing towards the ground. And the same thing happens on landing, except it's almost magnified. So when you're doing your, your landings, when you're coming into land, the first thing you want to be thinking about is your power. When you want to slow down, you want to pull back your power but maintain level flight. And um, if you need to increase or decrease your speed very quickly, don't touch your throttle. Just use your pitch to do it. So here we are, still at 170 miles an hour, more or less level flight, descending slightly, which is perfect. Our gear is down. We've got that green indicator over there. I raised my flaps, so I'm going to go ahead and keep them up until I turn back on final. And we're going to start our turn here. Yep, yep, I know. There was a skidded turn. It's very hard in these simulators to... Uh, feel the forces. If you're flying in real life, you will feel the slipping force, and you'll know to use your rudder to uh, keep everything coordinated. That's why I use the gauges so much. A lot of people have also given me some flack for um, not flying VFR in a simulator. Like, when I come into land, I look at my vertical speed indicator, which is this gauge right here. I kind of glance at it quite a bit to see whether I am 
um, descending really quickly or descending nice and gently in real in real flight when you're flying for real you can kind of feel that you can gauge it a lot better than you can in a simulator so I use the gauges for my input so here we go we're gonna turn on final as soon as we level off I'm gonna put my flaps all the way down I could probably start lowering them right now, but I'm not going to because I'm in the middle of flying and talking and reading and doing all kinds of stuff at the same time. So this is not super easy. I'm also going to start reducing my my power here so that I can start my descent towards the runway. Now let's go ahead and get our flaps down. You want to control as many of the variables as you can. If you If you level off and you're pointed towards the runway and then you start introducing your flaps, you're not worrying about the turn while you're introducing flaps and changing your lift and all of that as well. So I want to maintain about 120 miles per hour on my approach here. I want to be coming down at about 500 feet per minute. And then I'm going to trim that out so that I no longer have to hold my controls. Getting a little fast there, so I'm actually going to raise my nose to slow down and reduce my throttle. Gear is down, flaps are down, we're on short final. 120 knots. Now see, if I wanted to drop, if I feel like I'm too high, I'm going to reduce my throttle and the plane is going to stay at the same airspeed, but it's going to start sinking quicker. You'll notice my climb rate there is now dropping. I'm going down 1,000 feet a minute. I want to rest that. I'm going to increase my throttle. Still going 120, but now my descent is 500 feet a minute. As I get closer to the runway, I'm going to start leveling off and reducing my throttle at the same time, very gently, very gently. And I'm going to kind of glance down at the vertical speed indicator Try and keep it as close to zero as I can. And there we go. A little bit of a bounce. But that's fine. I'm going to pull my stick all the way back because that locks the tail wheel in the P-51. And I'm just going to hold it all the way back. Use my rudder to maintain center line as best I can. Raise my flaps. Let's see. It's shift F. There we go. And here we go. So it took two attempts, but that's fine. If you have to go around, never be afraid to go around if you have to. It's safer to do that, save the plane. Um, it also takes less time to go around. At least you're still flying. You're not running through a startup sequence, right? So just take your time doing all of that stuff. Now we're on the ground, we're rolling down the runway. We can start using our tail wheel and, you know, glancing out like you're supposed to to see where you're going in one of these high nose airplanes. And just kind of slide from side to side on the runway. But some of the things that you really, really want to practice when you want to get better at landing is the airspeed for, um, I'm sorry, pitch for airspeed and the power for altitude. If you get really good at that, landings just kind of start taking care of themselves. You start knowing that you need to just kind of like reduce your throttle a little bit to get a little bit more of a descent rate. Let's go ahead and spin around here. All good. Whee! And we'll line back up here on the runway. A little bit of braking. There we go. Pulling the stick back to lock the tail wheel. We'll get lined up here on runway 26, which is 260 if you want to look at what the heading of the runway is. It's going to be about 260. And they do update runway numbers every so often. When magnetic variance changes uh, in the world, they do update those numbers. You can cut the throttle completely. I like to do it a little bit gently. It just works a little bit better for me. Uh, a lot of this is kind of personal touch. You're going to find things that work better for you than work for other pilots. So 
figure out what works very well for you as long as it's safe it's going to be work it's going to be correct uh, a great beginner hotastic is the um thrustmaster t16000 it's like 100 120 bucks i think for a stick and a separate throttle or you can just get the stick for about 60 bucks if you want it's got a it's got a throttle slider on it. It's not very precise, the throttle slider on the stick, but it works, and it's great for a beginner. Um, that's the one that I would recommend you get if you're going to get a, a joystick. Yep, he's exactly right. Mihai, that's perfect. I'm assuming that's how I say your name, Mihai. You definitely don't jiggle the stick. What will end up happening is the, the plane will start porpoising, and it'll go up, and then when you push down to try and get it down, it'll dive down, and then eventually you'll probably end up planting the front of the plane into the runway, which is not something that you want to do. Um, let's do this again, except instead of the P-51, let's pick a different plane. Let's do this in the Su-25. Because it's a jet plane... It's a free plan that you guys can all use if you don't already have other modules. Actually, since all the modules are free right now, um, you could go and grab something else. Well, let's go ahead and do SU-25T. And this is also a quick one to start up, so oh my god. Shut up, AWACS. One second while I do this, and I don't want to hear you at all because I don't care. And I'm going to turn off my RWR. Turn down the volume. Cool. No beeping, no AWACS. Shut up. Awesome. We're going to go Alt Home. We're going to watch our engine start behind the chat window here. Oh, and I don't have my, I don't have a cursor here. Let's do that. Do I have a cursor? No cursor. Okay. Guess I can't use a cursor. Oh, well. Um... If you see right behind that chat window, there's that green light that lit up, and that's the engine starter. You can see the uh, dial there. Engine's warming up. Engine starter light just went out. We'll do right control home. Yeah, Sneak. Awesome, man. You're very welcome. Um, I'm trying to put together more tutorials. They just take so long to put together. Uh... The SU-25 videos that I put together, those were like eight years ago, nine years ago at this point. Um, they were really a passion project. They took a lot of time, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Now I'm just trying to get people more confident about flying, you know, multiplayer. Kind of what uh, Tactical Pascal is doing. Uh, he also has an excellent channel, so if you haven't uh, gone and seen some of his stuff, he does some really good content as well. Um... Jabbers does some pretty good stuff. Uh, Ralphie Dude. Who else? Spud Knocker. I like a lot of the guys who are who do uh, DCS tutorials and things. I love them all. They're they're fantastic. Jabbers actually, I think, lives next uh, somewhere near me. So I think once this uh, shelter-in-place stuff is over, I'm going to see if we can go um, actually do a real-world flight with him because that would be a lot of fun. Cool. So we got our engines on, got our lights on. We'll go ahead and... Oop. Is this two? It is two. That's interesting. I did not know that. Very cool. Go ahead and get taxiing. I don't want any weapons on my plane. The weapons do change the flight dynamics. The heavier the plane, the harder it is to take off and land and all of that. I'll just go ahead and taxi to the runway over here. I believe it's runway 7. Unless we're at an airport, different airport. Thanks, Sneak. Thanks, Sneak. Have you seen any of my other planes, the uh, Aviation Concepts videos or the T-51, TF-51 uh, tutorials that I was putting together? <laughs> and I did a couple of other uh, live streams. I've been doing a lot of cooking, and I know that that's probably annoying to some of you guys who don't really care, and you guys are more interested in DCS World and uh, aviation and things like that. Uh, I've been doing the cooking stuff because it's a way to kind of keep my community local people that know me uh involved they aren't all aviation nerds like we are and um i'm just trying to keep people you know engaged and happy and 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 helping them pass the time and hopefully helping them learn new skills so cooking is something that i'm hugely interested in uh, almost as much as aviation actually maybe even maybe even a little bit more than 
in aviation, but uh, only because there's a direct relation between what I'm making and what I can eat, <laughs> and I love eating. So, um, yeah, please uh, bear with me on the cooking videos. There, you know, just ignore them if you don't want to watch them. That's cool. There's going to be. I'm not changing the channel to uh, a cooking channel or anything like that. I would set up a completely separate channel if that's if that was going to be the case. But. Uh, just talking about landings today, we're going to get the Su-25 up in the air, and then I'll show you the exact same concepts that I just showed you in the P-51 and how they differ in a jet. Because a jet, you don't have to worry so much about the, the uh, P-factor and the other forces that you have when you're running in a propeller plane. Propeller planes, since they have that giant propeller spinning at the front, uh, it's essentially a giant gyro. It's a gyroscope. And as you change how fast it spins, it changes the amount of force that's being put onto the plane. So the, the plane wants to rotate to one direction or the other based on how much uh, torque the propeller is putting out. Oof, that is some ugly ass reflection right there. Yes, it is. Um, it's cool, we'll land the other direction. So we'll go full throttle here. Uh, let me put in one notch of flaps. And we'll use that for maneuvering takeoff. And then we'll come in and, and do a landing using the same principles. I'll get this guy trimmed up. I'll show you guys how uh, the pitch for airspeed and the and the power for altitude ends up working. 250 meters per second, <clears throat> or kilometers an hour, is the actu actu accurate measurement there. Gear up. We'll get our flaps up as well. Positive rate. And here we go. We're just going to fly in this direction for a little bit. So when you're taking off, if I if I if I just let the plane go, it's going to just want to climb. It's going to pitch very very uh severely nose up. And what's going to happen is it's going to get to a point where this nose up attitude is going to start not being sustainable by the thrust that the plane is producing. It's going to slow down a little bit. We can look at our 470 up there, 460. 450 as the plane slows down the nose is going to want to come back over because the thrust is not enough to keep the plane traveling in this direction no oh, we got what an awax or an aerial refueler guy over there here i'm just going to go ahead and level off so that i don't conflict with him where are you at buddy there you go so in this plane we actually have a vertical um uh, vertical speed indicator over on the right that that four three two on the right the the vertical bar over there as long as that is at zero you're not climbing or descending and i'm not 100 percent sure if that's an angle or if that's a rate it's not mentioned in the manual or at least not that i've seen you basically want that to be zero and you'll be maintaining level flight one or two in either direction is probably not a huge deal Although, um, you'll notice that as you trim the plane out or as you level off, the plane is going to speed up and then want to continue climbing. So let's do this. We're at 100% throttle right now. I'm going to pull my throttles back to 80%. And as I pull my throttles back to 80%, the plane wants to start descending. So I'm going to maintain level flight here. And I'm pulling back on my stick a little bit. You can actually see the stick in game being pulled back. I'm going to try and maintain a zero. You know what? Let's turn north. There's a lot of really bad glare. Even in the turn, I'm trying to maintain as close to a zero on that as I can because it just means that I'm not descending or ascending. So I'm pulling back on the stick. I'm at about 80% on my RPM there. And I'm going to start trimming my stick back so that I don't have to pull it back and hold it back. At a certain point, you'll be balanced. I'm not touching my stick right now, and I'm maintaining a turn, slight descent, so I can actually probably trim up a little bit more. And I'm going to level off here. Now, as I level off, that horizontal component of lift is going to go back into the vertical component, so I'm going to have to trim my nose down a little bit. All of this is applicable to the FA-18 and the carrier, by the way. So if you're having trouble with your carrier traps or your uh, carrier patterns and all of that, you just have to remember all of the four, the four forces of lift that are interacting on the plane. Cool. So we're at about 80% throttle. 
600 kilometers an hour and a very slight descent rate which I'm just kind of toying around with to keep it as close to zero as I can. Cool, 600 kilometers an hour. Let's call it that. Um, at this point, if I pull the throttle back, what's going to end up happening is the plane is going to want to stay at that 590, 600 kilometers an hour airspeed. It's not going to want to slow down. It's going to actually just start nosing down. So let me pull back my throttle to say 60%. And I'm not touching my joystick or anything. The plane is trimmed for 600 kilometers an hour. What's going to happen is it's going to start nosing down until it can gain speed to get back to 600 kilometers an hour. The, trim is pl uh, the plane is trimmed for 600 kilometers an hour. And this can happen super fast, or this can happen super slow. Yet, this is what the plane's going to do. There we go. Now it's starting to speed up. 580, it's going to get back up to 600. And we'll notice that our vertical speed indi indicator over there is going to start going back up as we speed past 600, because now the plane's going to want to pitch up a little bit. It's going to start climbing. So we're at 25 degrees down, let's say, 610, 24. It's going to go to 23, going to go to 22. Eventually, the plane is going to pitch up a little bit until it slows back down to 600. And I'm again, we're just maintaining 60-ish percent on our RPM. I haven't touched my throttles. I'm not touching my joystick. The plane just wants to maintain where I have it trimmed at. Likewise, if I re increase my airspeed back up, or my throttle back up to 80%, it's going to level off because the plane is trimmed for 600 kilometers per hour. So right about there is where we were. plane is leveling off. It's going to start climbing slightly because we're going a little bit fast. It's going to slow down to 600 kilometers an hour, and then it's going to nose down again. Eventually what will happen is it'll equilibrium, equilibriize at level flight at 600 kilometers per hour. So here we go. It's starting to slow down. We're 14 degrees pitch up, if you want to say that. 590, 580, 15 degrees, 14 degrees, 13 degrees, so now it's going to level back off. It's actually going to start descending slightly until it goes back up to 600 kilometers an hour. All I'm doing is changing my airspeed, or my throttle. I'm not changing the pitch at all. Now, I can actually just, you know, level the plane off right here at uh, zero and hold it. It will climb back up to 600 kilometers an hour. So... This is more for demonstration and more for something for you to go and actually play around with. Just take some time. Add some add some power. Remove some power. See what happens to the plane. See how little of an adjustment you need to make for the plane to actually start reacting to some of this stuff. Let's go back up to 100% and we'll turn back towards the airfield. Yeah, apparently there are th double throttles on this. The uh, So the Thrustmaster Warthog has double throttles um, if you're using that joystick. So you can actually move each engine independent of each other, but I didn't know that the SU-25T was separate like that. I thought that it was just one throttle control, so I learned that today. What else do we have? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the free trial is awesome. Uh, my favorite plane is the F-A-18, but it's been that forever. Uh, I used to go to air shows and watch the Blue Angels. They're my favorite uh, stunt or aerobatics team. I would love to go up and actually fly with them. I think that that would be fantastic. Uh, I don't think I'm a big enough YouTuber yet, but maybe someday. I am flying in VR. Yep, I'm... Um... So, I use a thing called Restream.io. And, um... It has a little chat program. And let me trim this out here real quick. There we go. We'll pull this back to 80%. Because I don't need to be going 900 kilometers an hour. It's a bit fast. Um, I'm using so so restream, which is the uh, the application that I use so that I can do use YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook all at the same time. They have a chat application that also connects to those. Uh, it seems to be buggy at the moment because I think all three of the services that I use are updating their their backends and their APIs and stuff. So I think restream is 
just having to deal with that. Um, because right now all I'm seeing is YouTube, and I'm pretty sure I have people on Twitch watching as well. And I'm not seeing anything from Twitch, so I'm sorry people on Twitch, I, I'm not seeing what you're saying. So, um, I, I wish I could respond to you, but I can't. Uh, without taking off the VR headset, which is the sad thing about doing VR, because now you can't see anything else in your room. Uh, and for VR, I'm using an index. Um, I have a i7 or i9 or whatever it is, uh, 9900K, and uh, just a GeForce 2070. So I'm not doing anything super crazy. I don't have like a giant beast of a machine with, you know, three processors or anything like that. Uh, it's just a basic gaming rig. And it does get kind of chunky sometimes. Like sometimes I do get uh, some stutters in VR, yet it's good enough for me and the experience is compelling enough that I don't really care. Yes, I would love for it to be better, but where it is right now, I feel like I'm sitting in an SU-25 right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. In the FA-18, when you're doing carrier ops, it is incredible. Um, What else can I talk about? Cool. So we're going to be turning back towards Kabuleti here, and we're going to be coming in for landing. Now, what I'm going to want to do here is I'm going 590 kilometers an hour, and I'm at 2,000, I don't know, meters in the air, whatever it's going to be. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back my throttle here, pretty much to idle in a jet. And I'm going to start slowing down. I'm going to try and hold level flight. I don't want to descend too much yet because my purpose right now is to slow down to pattern speed. Pattern speed in this plane, I'm going to say, is about 380. Once I get to 380, I can start descending. Now, the cool thing about the Su-25 and a lot of the other military jets is we actually have air brakes. So I can actually deploy my air brakes, which is that. On this, it's just those guys on the wing. They deploy, and my airspeed is going to come down quite quickly. And at the same time, I'm going to be kind of looking through this really, really hazy HUD to try and see if I can find the airport, and I think it's that right there in front of me. Yeah, that looks correct. Awesome. So I'm at 450. Let me pull up and stay level. I'm going to trim for level flight. Don't want my radio menu. Radio menu, go away. Buddy, please. There we go. Maintain level flight. You'll notice that my nose is pointing up a little bit, which is fine. It just seems like that because the earth is actually below me. So 380, I'm going to reduce or retract my air brakes. And at this point, I'm going to just start a gentle descent. So I've got Kabuleti there in front of me. I know that I'm going to be landing on runway 25, so with that information, I know that my heading needs to be about 250. Right now I'm at about 255, 257-ish, whatever. I'm going to start turning. Well, I don't feel like I'm lined up with the runway yet. Nope, I'm not. So I'm actually going to keep flying this direction until I feel like I'm lined up. Then I'm just going to turn towards 250. I'm actually going to increase my right hand direction a little bit until I feel like I'm more lined up with the runway. I'm not going to dive down. This is a very gentle descent. I'm going to be sitting here chilling uh, four degrees down, whatever that ends up being, maybe four. I don't know if that's 40 meters a, a minute or 40, whatever that four stands for. I've also got this thing, the yellow, the yellow T, the yellow Tesla looking icon over there. That's also my vertical speed. So the HUD is just repeating what that says. So now it's a... Uh, seven degree down angle and it's reflected on that gauge as well the analog gauge thanks jocelyn i did not have any problems with the index delivery all right cool so now i've overshot the runway so i'm going to turn the other way as i turn my my vertical component of lift is going into the horizontal component so it's going to want to descend a little bit and i've just got to fight that by pulling back on the stick at the same time, I'm realizing that I'm holding the stick back when I can just be trimming nose up. So I'm going to trim nose up. At this point, I'm actually going to lower my landing flaps. And I'm going to watch and make sure that they're both indicated. The nose is going to want to pitch up a little bit, so you're going to want to counter that. Landing flaps are down. We're going 350-ish, so I'm going to put my gear down as well. I'm going to check that, make sure that those indicate.
And again, I feel like I'm pretty high here. So rather than dive down towards the runway, I've got my engines idling. Uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to reduce my speed while pointing towards the ground. I'm just going to extend my brakes again. That's going to slow me down quite a bit. It's also going to increase my descent rate. I'm not going to change the attitude of the plane. I'm still going to maintain this general setting and let the plane just kind of settle itself down. Touchdown speed in this plane, I'm going to say, is about 250 kilometers an hour. So that's what I'm going to want to do. I'm going to want to get down low enough to where I can level off. Let's go to retract the speed brakes. Now I can actually pull my nose up because I'm more on glide path. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm doing better. And I want to take that vertical speed component there, the eight, seven, six on the right. I'm going to pull back until that's about a five and I'm going to trim that so that I don't have to hold it in my stick. Now I'm going to increase my engine speed I'm not pulling back the planes doing that naturally and this looks like a good approach so all I'm doing here is adjusting my throttles and I want to touch down at about 250 kilometers an hour I'm at 270 which is great good approach speed coming in coming in coming in just just pulling back a little bit a little bit more throttle 260 at this point I'm gonna start pulling back on the nose and reducing my throttle and the plane is just gonna kinda of settle down onto the runway just like that wheel brakes as soon as I get to 190 kilometers an hour I'm gonna hit the P button which pops drogue shoot which looks like this Slows the plane way down. And wheel brakes, and we can drop the drogue chute by pushing P again. So there's a good landing in the SU-25T. At this point, we're going to get our flaps up. And we can go and park if we wanted to. So again, a lot of that wasn't like, you know, pointing the plane down towards the runway to try and descend. I just pulled power back. As the plane started descending a little bit too quickly, I just added a little bit of power back in so that it leveled off. You're not trying to control your descent with your pitch. You're trying to control your descent with the throttle is essentially what you're doing. Um, thank you. Thank you. A lot of practice. Um, let me go ahead and show you how to do this in the FA-18. We'll do a carrier landing. And I'll show you kind of what I mean by that. The FA-18 is also a very unique plane in that... Let's see, where are you from? Cabaletti? Yeah, that's fine. If the FA-18 is not in landing configuration, it has a flight control computer that essentially keeps it trimmed. You don't have to worry about doing any of that. And I'm just going to let the auto start take the, take the startup so I can explain some of this stuff to you. As soon as you go into landing mode, the FA-18 switches to what a traditional plane would be. So in an FA-18, if you just reduce the throttle, the plane is just going to slow down. The computer takes care of holding the plane more or less level for you, um, depending on how aggressively you, re you reduce the throttle. So if you're not gear down, flaps down, you know, coming in for a landing, reducing the throttle is not going to have the same effect in a more modern plane like this one as it is in the SU-25T, the P-51. Oh, that guy looks like he's crashing. I wonder if he ran out of fuel. Bye, Felicia. Um, so it's going to be slightly different. However, once you get into landing configuration... It's going to go right back to the same exact concepts. You're going to want to do power for uh, you're going to want to do power for uh, altitude, and you're going to want to do pitch for airspeed. No, again, Detroit. No, no. 
all of the trimming in an F-18, if you're flying and you're just cruising, you don't have to trim it very much at all. The plane should try and just maintain level flight. That's what the flight control computer does in this plane. It makes it very, very simple to fly compared to the Su-25. If you're flying the Su-25 and um, you want to maintain level flight, you basically have to trim it out yourself. Or you can do the trick where you can, you know, hold it more or less level in the Su-25, use the level at altitude hold trim, uh, I'm sorry, autopilot, and then the Su-25 will trim itself to that, and then you can turn off the autopilot and you're trimmed for level flight, right? Um, in the F-18, when you add trim, you're more or less setting the angle that you want the plane to fly at, and it'll try its best to maintain that. So it's slightly different. I've heard that a lot, and I've actually, I've experienced that a couple of times myself, and I'm not sure why that happens. It's a it's a bug somewhere, and it might be with part of the takeoff or, or, or something like that, but I'm not sure why the plane constantly wants to pitch up. Maybe somebody else who's on the stream can, can answer that question if they know what the answer is. Um, for me, it happens a lot after I've landed and then taken off again. It, it just doesn't quite work right. And I'm not sure if it's because you're adding stuff to the plane, so now you've messed up the flight control computer or, or what the issue is. Uh, but yes, I have experienced that. <clears throat> so we're almost done here. I'm getting this guy started up. While I'm waiting, I will turn on my TACAN. TACAN is a navigation uh, radio system. We'll turn on the data link. Not that I need it in this mission, but we'll turn it on anyway. And I'm going to turn on the ILS. I know that the carrier's ILS is 17. And I know that the TACAN is 74. X ray, so we're good. Now on my. Canopy's closing, so we're about to start. Be good. Awesome. So TACAN's on. I'm going to turn this to non-map screen, and I'm going to turn on my TACAN repeater so that up on my HUD I can see my distance to the carrier, and on the heading tape at the top of the HUD I can see the direction to the carrier. James, you jump by pushing um, spacebar. That's also how you avoid the grass, everybody, just in case you wanted to know. So the F-18 also has nose wheel steering. You can see that with the NWS in the lower right there. You can turn it off. You can turn it on. You can also do high gain nose wheel steering where it'll turn a lot faster. We'll switch this to the flight control system, FCS. I'm assuming that's what it stands for. I am not a former Navy pilot. But we'll go ahead and get up in the air real quick, head over to the carrier, and play around with some more landings. Do, 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 do. Also, Bryn, I saw that you're on here. Uh, I am playing on our server, so if you want to jump in and, and play around, um, you can hop on. We actually rolled back our, all of our stuff, one version, so uh, we're running the one previous to whatever is out right now on the open beta branch. Go ahead and get lined up. We'll take off, and we'll go find the carrier group. Runway 07, more or less 070. Full throttle and rolling. A little bit of afterburner. And rotate. 
gear up. Flaps up to auto. And here we go. I'm going to switch straight to barometric altimeter because I don't care about the radar altimeter at the moment. When we get over the water, I'll change that back to radar altimeter. So yeah, um, if you're flying the FA-18, if I just like level it off like this and let go of the stick, the plane is going to more or less try and hold level flight. It is descending slightly, which is just because I'm not that precise. But whatever angle you kind of bring it up to and then let go, the plane is going to try to keep that. So I haven't, I'm not trimming right now. I just pulled up to about whatever this is, 15 degrees, uh, 12 degrees, and the plane is just kind of maintaining it. Do, 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 do. So you really don't have to worry too much about trimming in this until you get into landing configuration. If the plane violently pitches up, that's something different. I think somebody said reset the flight control system. The FCS reset uh, might fix it. I haven't, I haven't tried that. All right, cool. So let's go find the carrier. Looks like he is in this direction. I'm going to set myself up the way that I like to for landings. I turn my HUD on over there, HUD repeater, and then on this screen, I turn it on to my HSI just so that I have a real quick view of where I'm going. I'm going to change the carrier course I know is 331. So now I know that the carrier is going this direction, and I can see where I am in relation to the carrier's course. I'm going to change the scale as we get closer to it, and I'm basically just going to line up on that line. You can see the little blue dots out there. That's Those are the carrier groups. And we've got some target ranges out here as well that we kind of play around on. We call this our derp map. We just kind of derp around and play around on, on here. And let's see, I'm just going to go ahead and descend down to carrier altitude. See, I'm just pointing the stick down, I'm not holding the stick anymore. The plane is just maintaining where I point it. This is how it should be reacting. And this is the flight control system taking over and kind of having its way with the plane. I'll level off at about a thousand feet, and I'm going to start slowing down. So I'm just pulling back the throttle. In this plane, if you're in normal flight like this, pulling back the throttle will just slow it down. The flight control system is taking care of constantly trimming the aircraft to try and maintain level-ish flight. You'll notice that it is descending very slightly, but if you just pull back, you're essentially just resetting what the flight control system is doing. Carriers over there, we're getting close to the course line. Let's go down to 10 miles. We'll go down to 5 miles. Got a little bit of a stutter there on my end. I'm not sure if you guys are seeing that. And I think that's just because the F-A-18 has a lot more going on in the cockpit. At this point, I'm actually going to drop my hook. Because I'm over the water, I'm planning on landing. And I want to do 350 knots. So increase my speed up to 350. Getting close to that course line. I'm going to turn about 45 degrees in on it. say about there and then I see the carrier and its escorts and checking the line so in a carrier break you're coming in and the fact that you're doing a break and you're turning is what's bleeding off all of your airspeed as you approach the carrier this is where your airspeed makes a huge difference on this if you can be on your airspeeds this is the best demonstration of how airspeed has uh, such a difference in your landings. If you come in right at 350 and you perform a really good carrier break, you'll be right lined up for landing when you roll out on final. Let's go ahead and repeat the ILS on our HUD as well. If you come in a little bit too fast, you'll be too wide, so your 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 turn from downwind to base to final is going to be actually wider than it needs to be. And if you come in way too slow, you're going to be way too close to the carrier, so you're actually probably going to overshoot when you get uh, to your base turn. Altitude also has a pretty big factor because at that point, you know, if you're fighting to, to reduce your, your altitude, 
you're also going to be fighting with your airspeed to try and maintain that at the same, you know, at a proper speed. So being on point as close as you can with airspeed and altitude is actually pretty important for landings. With something super precise like a carrier landing, this is way more of a deal than it is if you're flying into an airfield. You can kind of play around with stuff a little bit more in those situations. So 850 feet will line up on BRC with the carrier. 340, that's cool. So I'm going to pass the carrier. I'm going to give myself a little bit of time. I'll probably give myself a, a nautical mile past the carrier. And then I'll start my break. And here I'm just looking at the deck, making sure landing area is clear. Looks like it. There are some other planes down there. We've got our recovery chopper out there as well. 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. I'm going idle, and I'm extending my speed break, and I'm pulling into a turn at about 10% G of what my speed is. So like a 3G turn. 250, gear's going down, flaps are going down to full. Now I'm going to roll out on the reciprocal course of the carrier. So I can use this course line here and say, hey, 150 is about where I want to be. And I'm going to be trimming for on-speed angle of attack. And this is where the tricky part comes. And I'm by no means a carrier landing expert. I have a lot of fun doing this, but I'm sure I'm going to make mistakes. I'm probably going to have to go around a couple of times just because um, I need more practice. So as I turn, I'm actually increasing my throttle because my vertical component of lift is going into the horizontal component of the turn. And then as I level off from my turn, I'm reducing my throttle slightly. There we go with the ship. We're a little bit low. So since we're a little bit low, I'm going to add a little bit of power because I don't... I want to kind of catch that glide slope. See, I messed up all of my speeds right there, so I'm coming in a little bit fast, a little bit high. And now I have to really, really fight to try and keep everything going. So I'm low. You can see the red ball over there on the left. Now it's yellow. And now I'm playing catch up with all of my... Yep, I'm just going to go around. Not a really good approach. I'm probably going to touch down. Nope, didn't touch down. And I'm just going to line up and try it again. Carrier landings are very, very precise and very, very difficult. You really got to be on with your speeds and your altitudes, and if you're off, it uh, can spiral out of control pretty quickly. But it's the same thing. I'm really not trying to push my pitch down or up. I'm trying to control my, my descent rate with my power, and I'm trying to control my airspeed um, just by keeping it on speed. We're going to climb back up to about 800 feet here while we go back into the pattern. Oh. And I think part of my problem is I'm turning a little bit too steeply. So you see those tick marks down at the bottom of the HUD? Those are your angle of bank, essentially. And I believe it is zero angle of bank here. The next one over, I think, is 5, and then I think it's 15, and then I think it's 30. I might be wrong. Like I said, I'm not a super expert at this. But I do know that you don't want to go very much further beyond that second tick mark over there when you're turning towards the carrier. I'll start our turn. Basically just want to go clink and then just keep it there 
keep it as close to that point as you can. Without going too far over it. And you'll notice that I'm on speed. That AOA indicator over there is the amber circle, which is what you want. There's the carrier. I'm getting a little low, so I'm going to add air speed, or add throttle, I'm sorry, to kind of level off. And what will happen is as I'm maintaining level flight, the plane will catch the glide slope. Then I can start reducing my air speed again, or my throttle again, to, to start descending. Here we go. Now I'm constantly moving my throttle up and down. And roll out. Here we come. Coming down. Reducing my throttle, not going off of uh, on speed. And full throttle. Ooh, did I get it? Caught it. Probably hit the first wire. Let's see what I get. Ooh, last wire. Fourth wire, so I must have skipped over it. But that's always a fun, fun little thing to do. And then at this point, I want to get out of the way as quickly as possible. Pop these guys up, and we'll move over. But yeah, that's probably one of the biggest tests of um, how good of a, how, how how good your control is over your. Uh, landings is trying to come in on the carrier because you have to be very precise and it's a lot of throttle and not so much pitch. You're just changing your um, turn so that you're on downwind, base, final, etc. And uh, yeah, that's what you're you're just playing with your throttle. <laughs> it's a lot of and and that's not a euphemism for anything. You're you're literally just trying to work the plane down. But yeah, a lot of fun stuff. Hey, Daniel, how's it going, man? I just let the the plane turn itself, uh, Detroit. I just um, bank it, and when you're going that slow and the plane is in landing configuration, the flaps are going to create enough lift to make the plane bank. You... When you're doing a carrier landing, you really don't want to touch... You don't want to be pitching the plane at all, almost. Actually, you really don't want to be pitching the plane. You want to be controlling your climb and descent with your power 100%. And all you should be doing is left and right with your with your stick for, for bank and turn. Um, get all set up here. Turn off our anti-skid. I should have turned it off before we landed. <clears throat> but that's all good. But yeah, I'll show you that knot on the carrier so I can explain it a little bit better. Uh, we'll get our wings down. And then we'll take off. But yeah, as you're, as you're flying in... Here, let me see if I can do that. As you're flying in, you've got yourself trimmed up for your on-speed angle of attack, which means that you're going the correct speed to maintain the correct angle of attack to catch one of the wires at the back. If you start pitching, you're going to be changing the configuration of your plane, and you don't want to do that. It's going to be uh, either decreasing the angle of attack or increasing the angle of attack beyond what the, what the hook is set up for to catch the wires. When you're set up on speed on your angle of attack, your throttle is going to be controlling all of your descent and ascent and your turning. And this is going to be controlling your bank. And that's really all you want to be doing is left, right, and then up and down on throttle. You don't want to be, you know, like forward and down and like you don't want to be doing any of that. You want to more or less leave your pitch alone uh, if you can help it. And it gets really, really hard to just kind of trust that things are going to work that way. <laughs> but... Uh, they do. Usually I have my best landings when I'm not trying to force the plane and just letting the plane do what it's going to do. Let's go ahead and get back in the air. Away we go. And 
get our gear up, pop up our flaps. We will bid farewell to the carrier group. Turn off our TACAN and our ILS because we don't need them anymore. We'll head back over to Cabo Eddy. I guess I could tune in Kabuleti's Takan. Hello, carrier group. We've got the John C. Stennis right there. Rescue chopper, a couple of cruisers escorting it. Over there we've got the uh, Tarawa and an escort ship as well. And then we've got the uh, Russian carrier Kuznetov or whatever you want to call it. I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce that name over there for some SU-33 fun. But here's what I'm going to do. We're flying back to Kabuleti, and I want to discuss landings. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up in landing configuration right here. I'm quite a ways away from the airport. And I've got my stick so that you can see it here when I'm when I'm demonstrating things. We're going to slow ourselves down to about 250 knots. We'll lower our gear, we'll lower our flaps. And then I'll show you what I mean by pitch for power, or I'm sorry, pitch for altitude and airspeed. <laughs> pitch for airspeed, power for altitude. It's even hard to say it. But I'm not trimming the airplane. I'm not I'm not touching the trim controls here. I'm just every time if it starts sinking, I'll just pull back slightly and then let the flight control system kind of reevaluate what I want it to do and then it'll just kind of hold it there. Cool, so we're under 250. We'll drop our flaps down to full. We'll get our gear down. And you'll notice that this is when you get your AOA meter on your HUD, and that's the little E bracket that you can see kind of right above my uh, velocity vector. Now that's showing me what my ideal angle of attack is. That is where I want the plane to be. I, ideally, I want my velocity vector, which is the little uh, virtual plane kind of floating in the middle of the head-up display. I want that to be right next to that middle tick mark. So at this point, trim starts working. So now if I'm trimming the nose up, I can actually center that with the E bracket. Now, if I don't touch my 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 stick, if I add power, that E bracket is going to start climbing. The velocity vector is going to kind of stick with it because the angle of attack isn't going to change very much. Now if I change my throttle and reduce it, I should probably trim a little bit of left wing, but you'll notice that everything's starting to drop now. So if I throttle back up, it's all going to kind of move back up towards the top. So you're controlling your pitch. You're controlling your descent rate, your, your climb and your descent with your, th with your throttle and your power. Let's see, Kabuleti is over there. So at this point, since I'm set up in landing configuration, if I just like jam my throttle to the firewall, the plane is just going to start climbing. It's going to go straight up in the air, and it's going to be a little bit crazy. So I have to fly slow. In a general aviation plane, like a Cessna, we actually practice this, and it's literally called slow flight. You bring the plane back as slow as you can, usually like 10% above a stall, uh, whatever the stall speed is, and you just practice flying the plane level at that speed. And it's kind of hard to do. You want to go faster. You want to... You start not focusing on what the plane's attitude is doing. You're not looking at the descent or uh, ascent rate. And you just kind of start getting comfortable with what the plane is doing. Whereas... 
that's not what you want to really be doing when you're in slow flight. <laughs> you really want to be kind of on top of what's going on. Let's go ahead and reset Master Caution. Now, if I'm looking at my angle of attack indicator over there, I, it's flashing at me. I actually don't know why it's flashing, but it is correct. If I pull back on my stick, it's going to say that now I need to point my nose down. My angle of attack is too high. If I push forward on the stick, it's going to tell me I need to raise my nose because now my angle of attack is too low. If I let go of the stick, it's going to naturally just kind of go right back to where I had it trimmed, which is on speed angle of attack. This is the ideal speed for landing. This is the ideal angle of the plane to touch down when it's going uh, at this speed. But let's play around with this. There's Kabuleti over there, just past the mirror. I think you can see it over there. I know that I'm too high right now. So all I need to do is drop my throttle. Throttle's at idle. My angle of attack is going to stay correct. <laughs> or more or less correct. The plane is just going to dive because it wants to maintain my optimal angle of attack. Which at zero throttle is going to be a fairly nose down attitude. But we just dropped a bunch of altitude, which is perfect because now we're more on glide slope. So I'm going to just increase my throttle a bit. Again, I'm not touching my pitch. I'm, I'm just controlling this with throttle. I'm going to throttle up until this is more or less level. I'm not touching my joystick at all. Just throttling up. Still on speed angle of attack. Now I'm in level flight. I, I have not touched my, my pitch at all. Now I'm going to roll in on the airfield. Now, like we were talking before, some of my vertical component of lift is going into the turn. I'm not, I'm not pulling back on the stick at all. This is just what the plane is doing. It's turning this fast. As I level off, the vertical component of lift comes back. So the plane wants to balloon a little bit. Now, I'm going to actually force this back to level. Because I don't want to get into an oscillation. <clears throat> There we go, level flight. And there's the runway right over there. So when you start turning or banking in one direction or the other, if you add a little bit of power, you're offsetting the fact that some of your vertical component of lift is going away. So you can add a little bit of power just to maintain your descent rate. As you come out of the turn, all I'm doing is turning. I can remove a little bit of throttle to maintain my descent. And that's why you see them constantly moving the throttle back and forth. You're doing it in tandem with your turns and with all of the other maneuvering you're doing. So here I'm lined up. I'm going to increase my throttle a little bit and turn and line up. Now I'm going to decrease my throttle. And now I literally can just put that velocity vector right on the runway, right where I want to touch down and just leave it there. And I will descend, and the plane will naturally touch down in that spot. And they call it working it down. Where I'm reducing my throttle quite a bit, and then increasing it to catch it. And then reducing it a little bit more, and then increasing it to catch it. And so here we go, coming right back down. You'll notice this is very gentle. I'm not going crazy. All I'm doing is using my bank to adjust what direction the plane is going. And there we go. Plane's on the ground. Throttle's back to idle. You can uh, put up the speed brake if you want in the FA-18. There's no parachute on this guy. So wheel brakes. And we're nice and gently back at Kabuleti. And we still have anti-skid off, so in the game it's going a little crazy. And now I can taxi back to wherever I need to taxi to. 
really the biggest things you guys can do if you want to practice a lot of this stuff and practice kind of the um, pitch for airspeed, power for altitude stuff is to take off from an airfield, line up with the airfield, don't necessarily try to land. Just play around with your power. I'll show you that real quick. Let's get our... Whoa. There we go. Gear up. Flaps all the way up. Just fly out to sea a little bit, and I'll show you what I mean. Great question, Nick. I am not IFR, uh, not IFR certified yet, so I don't have my rating for instrument flight. Um, I am kind of sort of practicing it, yet I can't really do that with the shelter in place at the moment. I would imagine if you have an approach chart, you could probably see where the NDB is, what the uh, what the heading from the NDB to the airport is, fly to the NDB, and then at that point uh, set your heading appropriately and try and line up. But that's a guess. I have no idea. That's probably what I would do if for some reason I got caught in that situation right at this moment. So here I am. Doing exactly what I told everybody not to do and diving towards the airport. But for demonstration purposes, if I'm lined up with the airport right here and I get myself in landing configuration, right now I've got my speed brake out to slow myself down. If I get myself into landing configuration, all I want to do is line up with the runway, stay lined up with the runway, and play around with my power settings. Gear down, flaps down. I've got my E-bracket. The first thing I want to do is maintain level flight. Let the E-bracket come down and meet my velocity vector. It's going to be around 140. So you can actually plan for that and start introducing throttle once your airspeed starts getting close to 140. And I'm empty, so it's probably closer to 130. Because the airspeeds change based on the weight of the plane. Less weight, you don't need as much lift to stay airborne. And then at this point, I can just trim it so that I don't have to put in any kind of input. And I'm centered with my AOA bracket. And now, if I were still lined up with the runway, just play around with reducing throttle a little bit. And then adding a little bit back to kind of see if I can get myself descending at a constant rate. Same thing, just keep like reducing throttle gently, seeing what the plane does, seeing what I need to do with my bank angle to maintain a straight path as I'm flying uh, on this approach. Same thing if I want to climb. I don't want to climb with a crazy, uh, you know, pitch up attitude. So all I'm going to do is increase my throttle a little bit until I start climbing and then just try and maintain a good climb angle. So at this point, like let's say I want to maintain 5 degrees of nose up attitude. I'm just going to in increase my throttle a little bit, reduce it a little bit, and just try and maintain this 5 degree up climb. Once you pass over the runway like we just did, practice with turns. As I start introducing a bank into the plane, the nose is going to naturally want to come down. I have to fight the urge to pull back on the stick in this case. I have to use my throttle to try and maintain my climb or my level flight or whatever.
but now I can just increase a little bit throttle. I, I want to try and get back to level flight here, so I'm reducing my throttle slightly. And now increasing my throttle, and then reducing it, and then increasing it, just to try and kind of work it down towards level flight. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to start pitching up crazily. As I start re removing the, the bank from this turn, my uh, attitude's going to want to go up. So I'm going to have to remove more throttle. I'm going to have to reduce my throttle even more. All of this is all connected, and that's why this is so difficult. It's not just a matter of pull the throttle back and you'll slow down. Um, everything is connected. If you introduce bank, you have to counter that by reducing your throttle or increasing your throttle, depending on what you want to do. If you change a flap setting, if you change a power setting, all of this stuff is connected and works together to keep the plane in the air. And right around landing is the most difficult part of the flight, in my opinion, to be able to have to manage all of this stuff because you're flying so slow that um, certain mistakes can lead to some pretty hazardous results. So there's a lot to think about, um, but it's a lot of fun to kind of play around with this and figure it all out. And right now my VR is getting a little bit choppy. I'm not sure if it's still choppy or if it's getting choppy for you all as well. I'm not sure if that's just the lighting or if it's the fact that I'm in an FA-18 or if it's the fact that DCS probably still has a memory leak or two or three. But uh, yeah, by all means, hop into a server. Give this, a, give this a try. Play around with it. See what you can do. See what affects your plane in different ways. Hope this was helpful. Uh, if anybody has any additional questions, I'm happy to answer them while I'm still kind of derping around. Uh, I think that the airspeed for altitude exercise is one of the most uh, interesting ones to kind of practice with yourself. If you're in a more modern jet like the FA-18, you're going to have to be in landing configuration. But if you're in an older plane, P-51, SU-25, uh, two of the free free planes that come with DCS World, um, you can just, as you're flying, play around with these things. You don't have to necessarily be coming into land. But uh, a lot of fun, so... Uh, new heart right now. I'm at full flaps, uh, full flaps and um, gear down, anti skid on. So I'm basically, you know, full landing configuration. This is the easiest way to get into slow flight in an FA-18. Again, the FA-18 has a flight control system that more or less controls the plane when you're in a flight configuration. So if you're wanting to practice these kind of landing uh, drills, you're going to want to be in landing configuration. Otherwise, it's not going to react the way that I'm explaining it. If you're in an SU-25, you can be flying with, you know, flaps up, gear up. Uh, it doesn't have a flight com uh, computer that's managing the flight for you. So it works more like a normal plane would. Well, let's try this again. So now I'm going to start turning to the right. The plane is going to naturally start wanting to descend because I am putting some of the vertical component of lift into the horizontal component of the turn. So I'm just going to add a little bit of power to arrest that descent and try and get right back up to level flight. And let's see, runway is over there, so I'm going to have to turn a little bit more than I wanted to, but that's fine. As I increase the bank of my turn, the plane's going to want to descend even more. So you just have to counter that even more. And then here, as I level off, I'm pushing down on my stick because the plane wants to balloon up <laughs> and I don't want it to. So for this purpose, it's okay. But if you're doing like a carrier pattern, that's not what you want to do. But here we are back on speed, lining up at the runway, increase power as I make my turn, reduce power a little bit so that I don't go over level flight. As I come out of the turn, reduce power, 
try and maintain a similar angle the entire time. I'm not pitching up or down at all. It's all power settings. So if I reduce my power, if I reduce the throttle, I'm going to start descending quicker. If I increase my throttle, I'm going to level off. And then if I increase my throttle even further, I will start climbing. And this is really what you want to kind of get used to. I'm, I'm not touching my pitch axis at all. This is all throttle control. Throttle control and slight bank to stay on center line. And what you want to do is kind of get to the point where you can balance your throttle so that you can put the plane down. You can put that velocity vector at any point on the runway that you want to touch down at and you can maintain it. And it's all with throttle. No pitch at all. In we come. Ground effect as we come into the ground. Which is actually kind of fun that that's modeled in DCS World. So the closer you get to the ground, you're actually going to want to pull your throttle all the way back. Otherwise, ground effect will balloon you back up into the air. But there we go, idle throttle. <clears throat> Here we go. We'll take off again. Flaps half. Flaps up. Gear up. Let's go find a tanker. How does that sound? I think the tanker is... Two, four, Y. Air to air. Enter. Might be three, four. Let's check the brief. Where are you, tanker? Texaco, six, one. One, three, four, two, three, Y. Well, I'm getting an indication up there. All right, let's go find our tanker. Getting low on fuel. 4,100 pounds. A lot of the landing stuff that we've been talking about also applies when you're coming up to meet with a tanker. As you increase your, th your, your throttle to get closer to the boom, the plane is going to want to climb slightly the flight control computer does adjust for it but it can't always adjust as quickly as you're making the, the corrections to your speed so you do have to kind of keep that in mind Do, 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 do. And then what was he at? One, three, four. Fifteen thousand two nine zero. We'll go and change our helmet settings again since we're no longer in an SU twenty five T and AWAX isn't screaming at us constantly. Yep, you can definitely control the rate of sync or climb on a turn by varying the roll angle. As you're as you're changing the angle that you're that you're banking, the uh, like I keep saying, the vertical component of lift gets shifted slightly. So you have a vertical and a horizontal component of lift, and that's why the plane starts sinking when you start turning, uh, and then wants to balloon when you level back off. Because as you add power in a turn to maintain level flight, you're adding 
vertical component of lift to maintain level flight as well as horizontal component of lift for your turn to keep the plane balanced. And then when you level off after that, all of that horizontal component of lift goes right back into the vertical component. So you've got to remove power to uh, maintain level flight, unless you want to climb suddenly. <laughs> All right, where are you, tanker? Double check I'm going towards the right one. 23Y, 61134, good. Two three y And the most important thing when you're doing tanking is to not look at the basket. And I know that sounds kind of crazy. Yet, that's what's going to start causing pilot-induced oscillations and all kinds of bad things. When you pull up behind one of these guys, you're either going to use the tanker itself, or in the case of this big boy that I'm about to pull up behind, he's got a, a boom that the tanking basket comes out of, and you're going to want to use that as a reference. Uh, Tactical Pascal has an excellent video on this on his YouTube channel. And obviously, if you have VR, uh, it does make tanking quite a bit easier because now you have depth perception in the game, which you don't get when you're looking at it on a monitor. Also, yeah, it's just going to be tough on a monitor, so don't... Don't get upset with yourself if you're not able to do it the first 10, 15 times. You know, you you do need practice. This is a skill. This guy said he was going 290, so I'm going to go about here. How's everybody's weekend going? You guys doing some fun stuff? Anybody playing DCS? I mean, obviously you're watching me right now, but uh, have you guys been having fun with the free planes that have been released? Anything that you wanted to try that you got to try that uh, maybe you liked or didn't like? I pretty much already own all the planes that I want to experience, so there's not really much in the in the free month that I'm interested in. Yet I am excited because a lot of my friends don't have, don't even know what they want to fly. Like they don't even know what planes to try. So this is a great way for them to get in and experience a bunch of different modules and really kind of uh, see what they enjoy. So what are you guys playing? What are you guys flying? And and what are you all enjoying? As we creep up on our tanker over here. Down to 3,000 pounds of fuel. Let's switch up to our fuel page here. Do, 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 fuel. I don't have a bingo set, but I would assume that I should probably set it to like 1,500 since we're right next to all of our airports. Getting closer. You don't want to come up on this guy too fast. If he's going 290 or 300, if you come up at like 450, you're not going to slow down quick enough to, <laughs> to join. You're going to end up flying right by him. He doesn't have to hit the brakes for you to fly right by.
But what we're going to want to do is form up on his left. I think this guy actually goes like 294 or 293, so I'm just going to kind of inch up on him at like 300-ish. At this point, I'm going to extend my fuel probe. And I'm going to go ahead and get my lights on because I like doing that. And he's going to start a turn here in a bit. Uh, we might have to refuel while we're turning. Again, we're going to be using him as a reference. So when he turns, I can just maintain the same angle with him. And I should be pretty good to go. Let me squeak up on him a little bit more here. There's nobody in trail. I know he's going about 290, so I'm going to start slowing down. I'm going 300. 299. Let's try and maintain 300. So you can see the booms that the refueling baskets come out of on the tips of his wings. And that's what I'm going to want to use as a reference. So I'm getting pretty close. The boom operator should be able to see me back here. Let's go ahead and see if they'll let us refuel. Nope. Let me get a little closer. And there's his turn. So as he starts turning, I'm going to start banking and trying to keep about the same angle as he is. I'm not looking at the horizon. That's what a lot of people do, and it gets you into trouble because you're looking at the horizon and trying to orient yourself to that. That is not what you want to do when you're in air-to-air -air refueling. You want to use him as a reference. He is zero. Let's go ahead and see if we can refuel from here. Let's get right behind him and see if that works a little bit better. Honestly, this is one of the most frustrating parts of air-to-air -air refueling. There we go. So now he's extending the basket, and I am not going to be looking at the basket. I'm looking at that refueling boom, and I'm just trying to keep it centered over my heading indicator there at the top. A little bit to the right, because my refueling <clears throat> probe is a little bit to the right of the nose. And all I'm looking at is the refueling boom. I've got that carrot at the top of my HUD, which is like the center point of the HUD. And I'm just going to try and keep that boom a little bit to the right of that. And he said he was going to 90. So we're going to close on him a little bit fast. 294. Again, I'm not looking at the boom or at the basket. I'm looking just at the boom. And I'm trying to keep the basket in my peripheral vision just at about the right height. That's it. Nothing else. Using the boom as a reference. Closing, closing. Two nine one. And you'll just kind of naturally miss it, just like that. However, you'll notice that I didn't bounce up and down when I passed it. And all I'm doing... Yeah, right. Thanks, buddy. All I'm doing is adjusting my speed here. And I gotta tell you, man, if you haven't tried flying in formation while talking and explaining what you're doing all at the same time, it is uh, quite a trip. Yep, there was the bounce. Just slow down slightly. Reorient behind the tanker. And take a look at the boom. 
just to the right of center. And I just want to kind of slowly inch my way forward. And again, at this point, you're really just maintaining um, orientation with the tanker. And using him as a reference. I think I got a little too close to him there. And air-to-air -air refueling is probably one of the most difficult things, in my opinion, to get correct in the game. Back off just a little bit. Contact. You're taking fuel. There we go. Now we'll just hang out here while he fills me up. Try not to get too close, try not to get too far away. Though I am getting a little close, so I'm going to back off just a bit. At least I'm going to tell you I'm going to back off. There we go. Return free contact. Oop, a little high. And he's leveling off. Now, I personally find it easier to refuel when... Oops. They're flying level just because you're not trying to also bank at the same rate that they are. But it's by no means an easy, easy task.
go. <clears throat> Just very minor corrections. Ninety three hundred, we're almost full. Contact. You're taking fuel. You're almost kind of thinking a little bit ahead. So right now I'm bouncing between looking at that boom and looking at my airspeed. If my airspeed starts to get a little bit slow, like 289, what it is right now, and I want to be about 290 or 291, I'll start increasing it very gingerly. And then if it pops up to 292 or 293, I'll start reducing my speed. Cool. So we're done. But you're kind of trying to anticipate what the input is that you're going to need to do and then doing it. We'll just pull back here, we'll close our fueling probe. Now at this point it's just me. If I had uh, Wingman maybe off the right wing over there, I'd probably descend a little bit, move over to the right, check him out, take some screenshots, because why not? Air-to-air -air refueling is really, really, really cool. And then we can go and... Do whatever else we need to do. Yeah, <laughs> the latest update is completely broken, unfortunately. Hey, uh, Burnside, you know you can switch over to the standalone. I know a lot of people are just on the Steam version and they like to keep everything kind of um, in Steam, but you can always transfer the Steam keys to the standalone if you wanted to. You just can't go vice versa. So, um, it is an option if you want to play around with stuff. Yeah, Uni, I mean, that's, that's kind of the way that I feel. Like, when the beta breaks, you know, that's, that's just part of, I, I, that's part of what I expect from a beta. Um, I know it should be stable and all of that, and yeah, there are regressions, but there's there's been quite a few betas that I've been a part of that are nowhere near as enjoyable as what the Eagle Dynamics P uh, crew puts together for DCS World. So, it would be nice if it didn't break, and yet, it's 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 gonna happen, you know? It's just part of what it is to be a beta tester. All right, you guys, you guys get to choose. Do I want to do another carrier landing, or do I want to go land at the airfield? And then I'll call, call it a night for the stream. And I hope that everything that I've been talking about has been useful. Hopefully, you all can um, do some, uh, do some practice, do some drills, get better at what, get better at your aviation, get better at your flying. I can see the carrier group, so I'm just going to start heading that direction. If you'd rather I go and land at the airfield, I will happily do that instead. We'll go ahead and get this set up. 74 X-ray. Not air to air. And he is going... Three, three, one. Horse line will... Increase the scale to five nautical miles. We'll descend down to pattern altitude. <laughs> Land on the Tarawa. 
That would be nice. I should get better at the Harrier. Alright, we'll get our hook out. In preparation for landing, hook is down. We will turn our anti-skid off. Flaps, we're good for now. We'll get lined up and buzz the carrier. Let's see, I think it's one, two, four, five? One, two, seven, five. Now what I should do is bind this to my numpad so that I don't have to click on the upprint controller. Haven't done it yet. Marshall, zero, five, four. Marky Mops, one, five, three, four, one, one. Angels, two, point, five. State, one, zero, point, four. Who is texting me? Zero, five, four. My dad is texting me. We are coming in a bit heavy, and I forgot to weld my wings together. It's all good. We did not die. It's very hard to use a checklist when you're in VR. up here going about 340 which is great nine hundred feet works for me Hey, mm, how's it going, man? Oh, let's turn our ILS on, too. We'll get that repeated up on the HUD. And they've got the lights on for us. That's nice. Quick pass. Looks like they're clear. Idle, speed brake out, 10% pull on G's. Power, Roger, BRC 321, St. Charlie. Gear down, flaps down, and we'll start trimming for on speed angle of attack here. Stay level. Reduce our power and start our turn. I'm sorry, increase our power and start our turn. Little bit of an overshoot. Let's see if we can correct it. High on glide slope. Settle, settle, settle. And catching it with throttle. 
back on and there we go full power we're good awesome Four wire. Oh man. Oh well. Can't do it all. Get out of the way in case anybody else is coming down. I cannot wait for the super carrier. I'm gonna be so excited when that drops. A little bit here to the. Right. I'll just go park on the elevator. A little bit of everything tonight. Hope you all had a good time watching. I had a good time presenting. It's about as good as I can do without a pushback or without somebody marshalling me. Somebody uh, moved me around with some batons or anything, so... Thanks a lot for watching. I hope it was helpful. Go out and practice your landings. Um, practice your, your power for altitude and your pitch for airspeed. And get better at them. The more you can control the plane, the more fun you're going to have coming in for landings. And the more you're going to start to be able to identify what exactly you need to work on. So thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping in for the stream, guys. It's been a, been a pleasure. Been a pleasure. Hope you all have a great evening and a great week coming up. Uh, Socially distance yourselves. Enjoy the Eagle Dynamics sale that they've got going on or the free free month that they've got going on. If you're on Steam, consider jumping over to Standalone. You can always add it as an external application uh, and just launch it through Steam if you'd like. But uh, yeah, can't complain. Got a nice sunset off there in the distance. Rescue Chopper. I'm going to go and uh, get some food. I'm going to go and get some food. So see you on the next one. Thanks, everybody.